What up, Pride? It's your boy Savio back in again with another reaction video, and today we're getting into the latest KDA song. I am very happy to be doing League of Legends songs again. I really miss them. They're really, really high quality. I was super surprised and got caught in a tunnel and did a whole bunch of them and like ran out of them, so I haven't done any of them in months, but I'm very, very happy for there to be new League songs out. Uh, this is KDA, I already did the Pop Stars reaction. It was really good, I was really surprised. This KDA song actually has a different lineup than the last one. It doesn't have Madison Beer and it doesn't have a Gyra, I think is her name, Gyra Burns, um, but instead has, hold on, Bea Miller? I, I think it's Bea, B? I don't know. I've only heard a couple songs from her, but both of the songs that I heard were very good. She has a very interesting texture to her voice. It also has Wolf Tyla? Wolf Tyla? Okay, we're just gonna be butchering people's names this whole time, but I don't know who this person is. I'm not sure if they're a singer or a rapper. I'm assuming that they're a female, given that this is KDA, but you know, you never know with Lee. Uh, it still has G Idol on it though, and G Idol was like, I think the most memorable part of the last KDA song for a lot of people. And so it makes sense that they would bring them back, but they switched out the two Western artists from the last song to this song. So I'm interested to see how that affects, well, one, how much I enjoy the song. Cause I actually really liked pop stars, but two, just the way in which the song goes about. Different singers or different rappers are going to give different vibes and perform in different ways. So I'm interested to get into all of that. In the meantime, if you like content like this, definitely make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the other side, guys. Peace. Okay, um, that sounded like that was about to go into something crazy. The intro is interesting. So the vocals on, uh, I think it's the baddest do the baddest, something of that nature. The vocals on that, all of the low end are cut out and probably some of the highs as well, but definitely all of the, the sub sounds, so all the, the deep, you know, bassy sounds of that person's voice were removed. And that's actually a common technique in a lot of like EDM pop songs. So EDM songs with pop vocals on them, they'll have the intro, they'll either remove all of the subs or they'll remove a lot of the subs and a lot of the highs and give it that like very narrow through a phone type sound. Um, and they usually do that leading into the chorus, so in a lot of pop songs, especially in today, the chorus will come right after the intro. So what we learn in school to be the most standard form of writing, the most standard structure of songs, where it goes intro, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, so on and so forth, bridge, whatever. A lot of pop songs don't do that now, and they lead directly into the chorus to hook you as quickly as possible. I think this is as a result of streaming, where you can just skip songs immediately you're not waiting a minute and a half to get to the hook and so they're trying to hook you as quick as possible and one way to do that is to make the course hit hard and one way to do that is by leading into the chorus with something that is not shallow but something that is missing some of the frequencies so that when everything does come back in it just hits that much harder so i'm suspecting that what comes after this is going to be the chorus but even if it's not, that that's a way that that is often used. Ooh, 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 that was, that was, that was uh, good, y'all feel me? Um, I think that that is Bea B. We're going to call her Bea, but if her name is B, then just, you know, excuse my French. Um, 
So I think that's Bea's voice from what, from the songs that I've heard of her, that sounds like the texture of her voice. So uh, for them to add her to this song and then immediately put her on the chorus is pretty interesting. I think on the chorus of pop stars, I just listened to pop stars before this to like have like a good comparison in my head. But if I'm not mistaken, it's Madison Beer on the chorus of the last song. So kind of like sub one out, sub one in, but it was very catchy. Overall, very, very good. Um, the second half of the music in that chorus, it sounded like they took all the synths and ran them through a tremolo, which most people who've, who've ever messed with guitars or any type of production know what a tremolo is. But basically for the people who don't, it takes the, the sound wave and it messes with the, the amplitude of it, so it, it modulates the sound. Uh, when we go back through the chorus, because I'm sure we're gonna hear it again, you'll, you'll be able to hear it where the, if you take the sound, instead of it playing through straight, it plays like this, like it, it modulates. And that was a pretty cool effect to switch it up from what they were doing in the first half of the chorus. Just overall, the production, yet again, on these songs is just very complex and has a lot of layers to it, which I'm always, so impressed with League for just how in depth they go into the production of their songs, given that, you know, they aren't a record label. Okay, I like the way that they have vocal stabs or like vocal chops in the background of the production. So like that little hey, you hear that a lot in a lot of like hip hop songs. Speaking of hip hop, this song seems like the production seems a lot more hip hop driven than the last song, which is perfectly fine. They're they're not like strange. They're they're not is it's not that they're super different from each other where you couldn't see like the same group making these songs it's just this song seems to the production seems to be more rhythmic than the last song which already had a lot of rhythmic production but anyway what was it talking about oh vocal stabs okay so uh, you hear that a lot in a lot of hip-hop production i like the way that they used it in this song because it's it's almost like a percussive effect it's it's very again rhythmic in the way that they, they use it, it's not just the, you know, every fourth note. And so I, I like, this is like small things in this song that are, are added to the song that just push it that much farther. I don't know which of the G Idol girls was rapping on, on that particular section, but it was good. Again, like I said last time, being able to rap in multiple languages and stay not just on beat, but stay in the pocket, stay in your flow is always going to be impressive to me. I went harder on that in the original um, KDA song, the pop star song. So if you if you wanna know like my deep in-depth thoughts on that, you can go watch that video, but I uh, don't wanna take too much time on that, but just, 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 so good, so good. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, that little pre-chorus section there, they cut the vast majority of the low ends out. It, it, they kind of did the same effect that I was talking about in the intro, but they did it in the pre-chorus. And um, they're, unlike in the intro, there was like actually still some percussion there. You had like um, little percussive instruments that, if you're wearing headphones, you'll be able to hear them. Or if you have uh, two monitor speakers in your room, you'll be able to hear them that like pan from left to right. So the little tsh uh, in the background. The backing melody is played by a synth bass in this song, and they pitched that up to, 
instead of being in the low end of the spectrum, they pitched it up to be in the mid mid section of the spectrum of you know frequencies, and um, they pushed it way way in the back, so you more feel it than hear it. But uh, it creates this like huge gap there at the bottom. You still have um, the singer or rapper, or whatever. You still have the artist over top, and you still have like music. But it feels it feels like it's missing something. Not like that it's incomplete per se, but just that that there could be more. And then boom, you get hit with the chorus again, and they give you that more and then some. And it's just it's it's so smart. It's it's real smart. All right, all right, all right, all right. Pause, pause. Okay, Jesus. Uh, we gon' we gonna have to take that back because I'm gonna have to hear that one more time. But uh, that was hard. That was that was hard. Whoever whoever's on this section, the she came into it very like swag singing like she wasn't i wouldn't say she was like melodically rapping but she it's it's kind of like when you hear rihanna rap it's like i'm i'm singing i'm not all the way rapping like if, if you say it's a spectrum of rapping way way over here singing way way over here and there's like a, a middle ground that you could say is like melodic rapping that intro part or the beginning part of her verse was leaning on the more singing side of it and the the production was just, just, just it was good dog it was it was real good and then um something happened where they brought in an 808 and paired it with like this thumping kick and it was like doom 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 and the entire production that probably sounds really loud to you guys with the head it, sorry um and the production cuts out and she delivers some some line. I don't know. I was vibing so hard. I have no idea what she said. And then um, the production comes back in, but it comes back in faster and very trap-esque. Like it that whole section of production sounds just like a, a TM88 or like a Metro Boomin. If you don't know who those producers are, they produce for all of the biggest trap artists from 2 Chains, Migos. Gucci Mane, all of them. If, if you, whoever you thought of when I said trap music, them, they produced for them. Um, and so that was, that was thumping, dude. That was right. I, I would bump the mess out that section, bro. And she switched up her flow and her delivery to be like, again, on the spectrum of singing to rapping. If she was like 60% singing, 40% rapping in that first section, she switched it up to be 60% rapping, 40% singing, which is generally what we would call like melodic rapping. So uh, Kanye kind of started it and then, well, I say Cuddy started it, but depending on who you ask, I think Kanye popularized it and then Drake took it and ran with it. And now everybody's kind of biting that flow. So that's kind of like the, the most standard kind of hip hop style of delivery. But yeah, that was, that was, I don't even know where I'm going with this. That was amazing. That was, that was so great. We are definitely for sure going back. Um, I'm gonna try to get it to line up to where that comes in, but oh, oh my God, oh my God. Oh. 
You hear that? That that's Zeus. Yeah, I'm recording this during a thunderstorm. That's called dedication, dog. Hopefully, my house doesn't get struck by lightning and and all of this gets lost. Okay. Anyway, uh, this section is wow. Okay, from wow, going from that being so hard hitting and. I don't want to say aggressive, but it was definitely in your face. And if you have any type of subwoofer in your car, like a, a decent one in your car, on speakers in your room, whatever, like that's going to knock, bro. And then transitioning into this section, which we had earlier, which is the pre-chorus, um, and or maybe they're going to do something a little bit different and make it a bridge in this case, but it was the pre-chorus last time. And the, the synth that they're using is very like like back to the future 80s kind of like not cheesy i don't want to say it's cheesy but it, it's a very very retro type synth um and the like contrast between those two is just like oh bro sorry that was that was that's like in in true damage giants where um i can't remember the guy's name but whatever Whoever has the second rapping section um, where they change up the the uh, production for him. And I mean, I went ballistic on that too. Like that's 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 the feeling that this gave me because like that was just so not only was it unexpected, but it just it just hit so hard. And whoever that was killed it, bro. Wh whoever the singer or rapper or whoever it was on that section, like so good, so good. Yo, that's the end? Bruh. Bruh. Okay. All right. 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 You're gonna learn today. Good lord, that was that was fire, bro. That was cra hey, sh Jesus. I'm trying to film. Okay. Anyway, that was amazing. Like, you see that flicker? I told you, I was I wasn't playing, bro. So sorry, that was distracting. Anyway, that was amazing. That I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. I'm gonna keep it hundred. I. I think I like that song better than Popstar. I know that's probably gonna be an unpopular opinion, especially because like the official video for this isn't out, but that song went hard, bro. Like I, I, I don't know what to tell you. The tempo on this song was slower than the tempo on the last song. And I think that lended itself more to all of them kind of catching that pocket easier. And it seemed like there was a lot more rapping in this song. There wasn't like any like crazy runs uh, at the end that I heard in pop stars, there's like a bunch, a bunch of crazy runs at, at the end. If you listen to that third chorus, they was going in. Whoever those singers were, I still don't know which singers it was doing all those runs. So if you know, let me know in the comment section down below, but they were going ham at, at that um, ending portion. This song kind of just like cuts off. If you're listening to it once, like on this video, it can give you that feeling of like, what happened? That's it? which is smart in the streaming age because a lot of times that will cause you to you know go back listen to the song again and if you have the song on repeat it's going to stop and start that much faster and it's much less noticeable that like oh hey the song is ending it just ends starts so this song is different from pop star which pop stars whatever which is good like you didn't i didn't want them to make the same song again but the ways that this song is different just vibe with me more personally. And overall, I just I just like it. I like it a whole lot. I've been super, super impressed with um, the cinematography, the, the production, the singing, everything about these League of Legends songs. But I feel like they might be getting better. Like, I know that sounds crazy. Like, maybe they're, they're um, learning or, or having access to to better, more talented people. Not to say that the people who worked on like their earlier stuff wasn't talented, but you get what I'm saying. When you have more money, when you've done it more, you have 
more access to more writers and more singers and more producers and whatever. Um, but yeah, this song was fantastic. Fan I, I really don't have nothing bad to say about it except I wish it was longer. So yeah, if you like this video, definitely make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought about the song in the comment section down below. Tell me what your favorite part was, how you compare this song to pop stars, and all of that. In the meantime, I will see you guys next time. Have a great day.